This is my dog Nina, and this is my All Sky camera. In this short video, I want to explain what's going on in here and how I put it together. Hi, I'm Aaron, and welcome to Alaskan Astro. This has been a fun little DIY project, and I thought I'd show what's going on just in case anybody is interested in doing something similar. Today, I am kind of committing my focus position, and I'm going to seal everything up and put some desiccant in here. I think I'm pretty happy with where it's at, and hopefully this is the last time that I'll be opening this box up for a few months even. So from the outside, we've got this waterproof cable gland where the ethernet that's carrying power and data comes in. There's a Raspberry Pi inside. There's a little 3D printed enclosure that I matte black spray painted. There's a gasket that I made with some gasket compound and just squeezed it, let it dry for like two or three days, and then used a razor to cut it apart. Bolted down. A uh, cheap little acrylic dome from Amazon, and then an ASI 678MC is the camera with the default all sky lens. I think it's a 2.5 millimeter. And then, if you can maybe see from that angle, these little holes in the printed top are to try to let hot waste air from the camera and the Pi up into the dome to basically act like a dew heater to keep this thing not frosted or not dewed up. We'll see how it actually works out this winter. So let me show you what's going on in here. So inside is this Pi 4B with a PoE hat, so it gets that power over ethernet, and it's got this little fan that is hopefully sending all the waste heat up into those holes around the dome to keep it dew free instead of running a powered dew heater. And today I'm going to toss in this little desiccant packet over here. So to seal this up, I'm going to be using a black RTV gasket maker which is kind of terrifying because I really don't want to get this stuff anywhere near the actual lens of the All Sky camera. And I kind of only get one shot at this. I mean, I can razor it off and try and clean it off later, but I'm just going to hope for the best. And an O-ring probably would have been a better design decision. There's a lot of things that I could have done differently on this as far as repeatability or accessibility. Like I have to crimp a new end onto the ethernet every time I send it through because there isn't enough room to go through this cable gland, but it's just what it is. It's a DIY thing and it should be pretty much permanently installed. So with that, let's squeeze some ooze onto this and hope that I don't ruin everything. Hmm. I wonder if it's gonna be easier to put this on the bottom of the lens and then put the bottom of the dome and then put the dome down. I don't think I have any good options here. Mm, stuff smells like old garden hose. If you know that smell, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That like almost hot summer, sunny day, rubber, old water smell. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be such a disaster. I love it. Actually, this is working out a lot better than I thought it would. Let this video be an example of what not to do. That's our neighbor with his snow machine out, if you hear it in the background. Oh yeah. Okay, I kind of actually love how well that worked. Let's see if I can find the last hole over here. Yeah, so I ground some flat spots on here. So as I rotate it, it almost like cams into place and locks itself, which ended up working out really nicely. It helped with my lack of precision of how far out these spots were. Ooh. 
we're in business. Now I'm just gonna try to align the whole box itself as north as I can get it, and that's easy to tweak later. But yeah, this is great. I'll give a really quick look at the software. Um, Patriot Astro has a really good in-depth video on how to set everything up with that, so I won't waste anybody's time making the same video again. But I'll just give a quick look at what it can do and how I've been using it. And I probably should have mentioned it, but this Ethernet line goes over to the Megapeer box and up oh, here another gland in the bottom and then there's a PoE network switch in there that sends power and internet. The AllSky software is an open source project maintained by, I'm sure I'm going to get this wrong, Thomas Jacquin an astrophotographer who is also living in the far north in Whitehorse, Yukon. And it runs on a variety of Raspberry Pi hardware. Currently it works with the Raspi camera and ZWO cameras. Uh, and again, for specifics on how to set all of this up, I would really recommend taking a look at Patriot Astro's in-depth video. Uh, he goes into all kinds of good detail and there's also really good documentation on how to set this stuff up. So again, I'm not gonna take time to do that. And if you feel like supporting Thomas's efforts for this, there is a PayPal donation link on the GitHub page. So what does the software do and how am I using it? So first and foremost, it is a software that controls your camera outside and it just takes a series of images on a set interval. And then it also runs a web page on your local network so that you can view those images. Now it automatically controls the exposure length up to whatever limit you set so that it hits a target brightness. And in my experience, it's really good at this. It does really nice smooth transitions through dawn and dusk with very little stuttering. So this is awesome for me to monitor what's going on when my rig is running outside. Uh, I can just open up my browser and see, yep, it's cloudy, I can go to sleep, uh, or if I'm in bed or whatever, I can just open up my phone and check and see, oh, it's clear, I should scramble and get the trash bag off my scope and start shooting. And it also overlays interesting and helpful information on each frame if you set it up to do that. The software also does some really neat tricks it automatically produces and saves a time-lapse video of each of your nights that you can then review in the morning to see what happened. This is actually what I've been using for the Alaskan Astro time-lapse channel. It's really nice and easy to just wake up with a finished video ready to go in the morning. The software also automatically produces two really neat images. One of them is a Star Trails image. These are super cool and it produces something really interesting called a keogram. Now, a keogram is a really interesting way to present what happened over a night in a single image. It's basically a narrow little slice of the middle of a whole row of pixels from north to south or however you have your camera set up, and then the x-axis is time. So you can see on this one, um, how as time goes on, we got darker, and then there's stars, and then you can see this kind of yellowish green is just the color that my clouds appear. Uh, and then you can see it getting bright in the morning again. It's really cool to compare these from night to night and see like what a, uh, let's see if I can pull up the one I'm thinking of here. Yeah, so that's my star trails image with some red aurora in it and the keogram from that night shows us what time uh, around five in the morning that those red aurora came up. It's a really neat way to present this information once you understand what's going on. There's other stuff the software can do and it's all configurable from within the web page that is running on the Raspberry Pi. This view that you're seeing on my web browser is actually running inside that box out in the yard is kind of neat. If you had this completely remote, it could basically take care of itself. 
And you can configure this if you know how to do it and set it up correctly to run a public facing website as well is my understanding. And there are other features that it can do that I'm not covering and all kinds of settings that you can tweak to get it to work exactly how you would like. It really is a neat project. That's what I've got for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope somebody found it helpful and maybe you can set something up similar for yourself. I'm actually going to include a link to the 3D files for my awful box, mostly because the top ended up being a perfect push fit for the ZWO hockey puck cameras. I was trying to figure out how I was going to secure that and it ended up being just this perfect fit. So I'll have a link to that in the description. Uh, otherwise, just remember to wear a coat because it's finally getting cold back here in Alaska. Enjoy some highlights from some time lapses I've taken over the last year or so.